work as an aide for an older woman and have been doing this for some time now. I run errands for this woman during the day usually, but at least once or twice a week we'll go into town and go thrift shopping and whatnot. I'd never been thrift shopping before starting this job and it's actually really fun. I found myself buying a lot of different things, novelty glassware, some cool speakers, and even some really nice brand name dress shirts. About two weeks ago I took my client to get her hair done at a local beauty shop. Since I'm a male, she doesn't really like me sticking around the shop because that's when the girls get to have their girl talk. So I found myself having basically a two hour break after dropping her off at the salon. I decided I'd do some thrift shopping for myself. I had about 15 bucks lying around so I figured, why not? I looked around at different shirts, DVDs, books, etc. but something caught my eye. Now I'm really big into music so this painting just caught my eye. It's a picture of an old man playing the violin. The painting was one of those things that you just have to have so of course I bought it. It was priced at about only one dollar so why not? I took the painting home and hung it on a wall in my living room. Every time I looked at this painting it felt that it gave me some type of inspiration. After the first night of having this painting in my apartment, things started to get a little weird. I started smelling what seemed to be smoke. Now I smoke cigarettes, but this was a different kind of smoke. The type of smoke that if you were standing around a bonfire for a while you'd smell like it. A few days later, after I'd gotten off of work, I was playing my PlayStation in my living room when I heard something in the kitchen. I just thought, whatever, it might be the neighbors downstairs or their dogs running or something. About a half an hour goes by and I walked out to get a drink and that's when I noticed my microwave was open. Weird, I thought. I haven't cooked anything in the microwave in a few days. I started hearing footsteps at night. My apartment isn't that big which made me feel very uneasy. I ended up taking the picture out of my apartment and I didn't want to throw it away so I put it in the trunk of my car. Two days after putting the painting in the trunk of my car while going to work in the morning, a truck on the left side of the road swerved and came into my lane and I had to lay on the horn and swerve for it not to hit me. I haven't taken the painting out of the car yet but plan to hang it back on my wall today. I'll give an update if anything strange happens after I put it back up. But my question is, is this painting cursed? I'm 22 and I moved into this very nice apartment about 4 months ago. During the first 3 months there, there was nothing even remotely strange happening that I can recall. Not a noise in the night, or anything mysteriously falling or anything like that which makes these occurrences even more weird for me for some reason. Also I should add I have never had any paranormal encounters or even slight interest in the paranormal until now. About 2 weeks ago was where everything started to get very bizarre. That's really the only word I can use to describe what's been happening to me. Two weeks ago I was just finishing up a movie and I remember the time being 1am on the dot. I turned out all the lights and went to the bathroom like I have every night since I moved in. When I flicked on the light, I saw a man flash before my eyes, who had what looked like a top hat on but it wasn't quite a top hat. I don't know what to call it, he had some sort of black on his face and the rest was white, not pale completely white. His hands were too, he had what looked like an old trench coat type of deal on. I don't remember anything else really. When I flicked on the light, he was there for about 0.25 seconds and he looked very, very malevolent. And it wasn't just the fact that I had just seen a scary man in my bathroom at 1am. When I looked into his eyes, I really felt this evilness that I can't really describe which is kind of why I'm posting this here in the first place, because I'm scared of it. I screamed at the top of my lungs, and I can honestly say I've never done that before, ever. I ran and flicked on my living room light and slept on the couch that night with a TV on. The next day I tried to make myself believe it was a hallucination, but it was extremely vivid. It wasn't like a ghost, it was straight up what looked like a physical body standing in my bathroom. The day after the sighting I was working on my computer until I heard what sounded like one of my glass cups breaking in the kitchen. It scared the crap out of me, it was fairly loud, 
I went to go check it out. I was pretty fearful to do so because I knew it might have something to do with what I saw the day before. I got into the kitchen and I saw a framed photo laying face down with glass pieces around it. This was one of my favorite things that I own. My dear friend gave it to me a week before she left for Stockholm. It was just a picture of us in front of the Colosseum. We both loved everything about Italy. I know it's not much, but it's very special to me and holds a place in my heart. When I saw it on the ground, I honestly was not even scared. I was just incredibly sad. The picture itself is ripped down the middle, literally almost splitting the two of us in the picture. I was angry. I remember yelling at it because I knew it must have done it because I put the picture up the day I moved in. Over the next week, nothing happened except for one night. I was sleeping and I woke up. And I was terrified, honestly, because I haven't woken up in the middle of the night since I was pretty much a kid. I'm a great sleeper. I looked around my room. Nothing was there. About 15 seconds after, I heard what sounded like a sprint come from my living room and fade out into my kitchen. I didn't say a word. I laid in bed, trying not to move the blankets to make a noise. I can honestly say I was more scared than I was when I saw it in the bathroom. My heart must have been beating 160 beats a minute. I stayed up for the next hour and a half until I accidentally fell asleep. This was dumb of me. It could have been an actual robber or something. And I just stayed in bed, but I couldn't even tell you how terrified I was in that moment. Everything was intact in my apartment the next day. The night after, I slept on my couch, and I woke up to a noise which I couldn't explain to you if I had a gun to my head. It sounded absolutely nauseating. It sounded like it was coming from my bedroom, but I couldn't really tell. All of my lights were on, so I was definitely less scared, but I sat up because I knew I wouldn't be able to sleep after that. When I sat up, I noticed that there was a minuscule amount of blood on my pants. I pulled my pants down to see where it was from, and there were scratch marks that had three streaks. I was bleeding, not a lot, but it was fresh. I was freaked out, obviously, because I definitely didn't have those marks the day before. I went to the kitchen to clean myself up, not even looking in the bathroom's direction on my way there. Ever since then, every so often, I've been hearing that same sound I heard before. However I describe the noise, it's not going to do it justice of how truly unsettling it is, but it's almost like a little melody in a high-pitched, raspy man's voice. I really can't afford to move right now, but this thing is obviously malicious. This is incredibly odd, so I don't expect straight-up assistance from the comments, but rather, I hope you can tell me what you would do in my situation. Alright, this is something my family doesn't talk about very much, and I want opinions. This starts back when my mom was nine. My family took a lake trip with some extended family members. My mom and her cousin were in the lake with one of those inflatable tires. You know the type. They're swimming and her cousin starts to panic because she can't feel the bottom of the lake anymore. She starts pushing my mom in the water to get on top of the tire floaty. My grandma doesn't realize what's happening and my grandpa is taking a nap in the tent. My grandpa said mid-dream, he heard a sing-song voice say to him, Go get your girl, over and over. The voice begins to get louder and louder until she's shrieking my mom's name. He wakes up, runs to the lake, and saves my mom and her cousin from drowning. Fast forward to when I'm 11. We live three houses down from my grandparents. My grandpa is asleep and he hears the same voice scream at him to go save my mom. We wake up to him banging on our door at 3 in the morning telling us to get out of the house. We oblige. Turns out that there was carbon monoxide, a leak in our house that would have been fatal for all of us if we stayed inside. He and my grandma have three other kids and he's only heard this voice about my mom. Even with the carbon monoxide leak, the voice only said my mom's name. I know how this sounds. My family doesn't really talk about it, but I want answers. Is it paranormal? Is it because my mom is his first child and they have a strong bond? Is it a coincidence? Is it because none of my aunts or uncles have been in life-threatening danger? Has anyone else had a similar experience?
I am an American from the state of Pennsylvania. This happened when I was about 44 years old, so seven years ago. I was stalled in traffic on an overpass to a highway because there was a fatality on the road. We were waiting a long time, so I go out and looked over the bridge. I heard someone say to me over my shoulder, I also died in a car accident. I turned to see who was oddly talking to me, but there was no one there. I thought I might have heard someone's car radio and went to my car. I couldn't shake the experience and went to my room and was playing soft music and I said aloud, Okay, person who told me they died in a car accident. I'm listening. Nothing. I felt completely stupid anyways, asking aloud. Just before I fell asleep, I heard a man say, My name is Phil Phillips. I died in a car accident in Wales on the Stone Bridge. I was drunk. My mom misses me. It was a stupid mistake. After I died, I was lost. I went up over a sheep field. I saw him quite briefly with messy dark hair and eyes. He had a skateboard and a long-sleeved jersey with something on the front and he turned and disappeared. The interesting thing was I asked him how I could confirm who he was and he said, 18. The next day I thought about it most of the day. I taught night school at the time but I had my laptop with me and I looked up his full name and the obituaries in the UK. There was an article about him there with his picture. It was the young man I saw. He died a few years before that time. He had a girlfriend and a baby. He had died in a car accident. There was a sheep field directly next to the stone bridge. I google mapped the accident site from the news report of his death. His mother was interviewed in the article. She said how much she missed him, of course. There were two Phil Phillips at the time who had obituaries from that region, however, the correct Phil Phillips to my story had died when he was 18. He was not from Wales, but was on a family holiday. I always thought to contact his mother, but thought it might come off as terrifying or macabre. I never did, but I hope she has been comforted by his memory. I would never want to upset her. Incidentally, this has never happened to me before or since. My husband and I are mild to moderate gamers. We play Dungeons and Dragons about once per month with a group of other old nerds and academic fellows and play board games like Settlers of Catan and Ticket to Ride with kids about once per week. One of our close friends recently stopped gaming because his wife said it was bringing evil spirits into the house or some crap like that. I don't subscribe to this at all and as a scientist I don't believe it. Anyhow, he gave us all of his gaming stuff including dice and books and all things like that and one of the dice really stood out to me. It is a green 20 sided die about the size of my fist. I thought it was cool so I chose to use it as my main 20 in a gaming session last week. During the session, I noticed it rolled 6 18s in a row. Statistically speaking, very unlikely, but on the bell curve of statistics it's also unlikely to get a royal flush and yet people still do so I'm still not creeped out. After the game was over and everyone left, I set the 20 sided in the middle of the table. It's very big, so I thought it would be cool to leave out and play with later on. I don't know, I'm kind of weird that way. I like that it was rolling big numbers and wanted to see if it just weighed wrong or something like that. I distinctly remember physically leaving one face up. I went into the kitchen to get a drink and I heard the die roll. There was nobody downstairs in the dining room and when I went and looked at the die, it had rolled on 18. This is when I started getting freaked out. I do have a scientific mind and just assumed someone was messing with me, but everybody was upstairs and didn't believe me when I told them what happened. I reset the die to one and waited. Nothing happened. We all went to bed and the next day I got up and looked at the die and it still said one. I left for work and no one was home. When I got back there was still nobody home and the die was on the ground. Rolled 18. We have security cameras and no one had come in or out. Deep down, I don't believe in the paranormal, but this die is freaking me out. 
It appears to have rolled by itself at least one other time, and this time my daughter was witness to it. She screamed when it happened, as did I a little bit, because we were both sitting at the table and it rolled while we were both there in front of us. I put the die away and haven't pulled it out since. What do you think is going on? My grandfather once told my mother about an encounter he had with what he claims to have been the devil many, many years ago. My mother would then go on to pass the story down to me when I was much younger, perhaps feeling that by then I might have been old enough to finally learn about what my grandfather had experienced. So before I start to recount my grandfather's tale, I want to state that I personally am not sure whether I believe this to be true or not. Nevertheless, my grandpa has stated many times before that what he had witnessed that night was 100% real and that he didn't make it up, so take from it what you will. To give you some perspective on how long ago this was, my mother is currently 44 years old. On the night this story takes place, my mother must have been about 23 at the time and my grandfather much younger than he is now. One night, my grandpa had gotten into a heated argument with my grandma and, in result, he decided to get out of the house and blow off some steam. He found himself driving down to the local bar a few blocks away that he sometimes visited and proceeded to spend the next two hours drinking away his problems. Once he felt that he had had enough, my grandfather decided to head back home. Slowly making his way back to his truck, my grandfather was fully aware that driving under these conditions could only lead to disastrous results, and even though by then he was only slightly buzzed, he decided to sit in his truck for a while in order to let the alcohol pass through his system. At some point, my grandfather must have fallen asleep, for when he woke up, it was almost 11pm. Readying himself to return home, my grandfather turned on the ignition but just as he was about to pull out of the parking lot, he stopped when he noticed a young woman walking towards his vehicle. The young woman, as he would later describe, looked to be in her mid-twenties. She had dark brown hair, brown eyes, was wearing navy-colored jeans and a white blouse with a black jacket over. She had a worried expression on her face and looked to be in need of help. As she walked around the driver's side window, my grandfather rolled down the window about two inches in order to hear what she had to say. From what I understand, the woman claimed to have no way of getting home and proceeded to ask my grandfather if he could give her a ride. At first he was reluctant, but then agreed to take her home as he too had a young daughter around the same age, and even though he would prefer she call him before asking a total stranger, he hated the thought of her having no choice than to walk all the way home this late at night. The young woman kindly thanked my grandfather but before he could motion for her to get in the passenger seat, she spoke again. Take that off, she said as she pointed down at my grandfather's chest where there lay his golden necklace of Jesus on the cross. Utterly confused by this request, my grandfather asked why she wanted him to take it off, to which she simply repeated herself with a slightly louder tone and said, Take that off. I grew up Catholic in a house where religion was very important, as did my mother and as did my grandfather. Being so religious, my grandfather did not want to rid himself of the holy symbol he carried around his neck. The fact that my grandfather was reluctant to carry out her request seemed to infuriate her. She continued to harass my grandfather, demanding he get rid of his necklace for some unknown reason. He tried to reason with her, but to no avail. The young woman then walked over to the passenger side door and tried to open it, it's then that my grandfather got a clearer look at her face. Her facial expression had changed to what he could only describe as that of pure evil. Her eyes also seemed to have become a lot darker and the air around him had begun to feel heavy. Completely terrified by this point, my grandfather quickly pulled out of the bar's parking lot and sped off down the street, determined to get as far away from there as possible. If you were to ask my grandfather what he thought he had encountered in that parking lot that night, he would most likely tell you that it was the devil himself in disguise, or perhaps one of his demons carrying out his will upon the mortal souls of this world, whatever it may be. Like I said before, take from this what you will. Whether you believe this to be true or not, 
is completely up to you. From the ages of six, myself and my brother, A, a year younger, have had what I considered possibly paranormal experiences over the years, though few and far enough between that they didn't really weigh on us. The same came to happen with two younger brothers when they eventually came along a few years later, and one more experience that can't be explained that was witnessed by myself, my mum and stepdad, and the family dog. The reason I doubt the validity of some of these experiences is that, one, they'd happened when I was a child, and two, my childhood environment wasn't exactly stable nor healthy. I've been led to believe that certain environments and mentalities and dispositions can draw in certain energies, i.e. experiences and entities. But then I'm also aware that the same circumstances could cause a child to manifest their trauma through their imagination, or even misinterpret their reactions to their circumstances as reactions to something paranormal. Please note I'm mainly speculating about myself here, and this in no way blankets anyone else's experiences. My brother A and I were terrified of a closet we had in our family home in the room we shared. I don't actually remember what caused this fear as we used to hide and play in there all the time, but eventually we used to associate the closet with some kind of foreboding. We'd be afraid to be alone in that room and we'd push things in front of the closet at night to prevent it from opening. One door bolted into the wooden frame holding it in place and the other latched into that door but this door would sometimes swing open. We used to lie awake in the mornings in bed, waiting for the other to build up enough courage to bolt out of the room first. I remember my brother used to say there was a two-horned monster in the closet, and it was described as black with horns and red eyes. Generic, I know, but I never saw anything myself. This stuck with us for about a year. At age eight, I got my own room, and I remember getting a light box that Christmas that I used to draw on in the dark until late as the house was usually in darkness around 9 or 10 p.m. with everyone in bed. This one night, I sat on my bed as usual, doodling away when I began to feel on edge. I looked up to see a shadow illuminated on my wall, as if someone was standing straight with the light shining in front of them, casting their shadow behind them. The only light in my room at the time was coming from my light box. I froze up on seeing this. The shadow began to move on the wall and split into two, as if circling my bed. My bedroom was small, with my single bed pressed to the wall. The window at the head of my bed, the bedroom door about a foot from the bottom of my bed, and some drawers against the other wall opposite my bed, leaving maybe two or three feet space on the floor, with the wall jutting out just after my drawers on that side of the room. I pulled my knees close to my chest, keeping myself firmly in the middle of the bed, away from the wall but not too close to the edge. The shadows seemed to drag across the wall and while they were in the silhouette of an adult person, the shadows were still vague. They didn't seem to extend from the light of the box, more seeming to stem from the ground and the shadow becoming darker at the core of the shapes. These shadows were darker than some of the shadows cast in my room and distinctly passed over them. They circled once slowly then began to speed up, causing me to panic and hyperventilate. My light box began to dim more and I remember starting to cry before it eventually died. Next I remember is waking up that morning in the middle of my bed having kicked my light box off in my sleep. After waking up a bit and recalling the night before, I remember this heaviness on my stomach, but nothing like that happened since, although it stayed with me and I developed this kind of anxiety when there were shadows in the home. Not much else significant really happened than I can recall, until the age of 10 when my other brothers came along. If interested, I will share more about them later. Any thoughts on these? I find it hard looking back and distinguishing between manifestations of a terrible childhood or real experiences or possibly a combination of the two. I've been carrying this with me for quite some time now and I don't know where else to post this. It's been a couple of months since this happened. I live in a quiet village in the south of Germany. 
Next to our village is a rather large forest with lots of hiking and biking tracks leading through it. When I was little, either my aunt or my dad took me there for walks almost every second day. It became a habit for me to keep on going for walks through the forest later on in my life as well, but that changed a couple of months ago. I usually went on walks with music on during daytime, but one night during a full moon and clear sky, I felt a little brave and bored at the time and decided to go for a stroll. I grabbed a flashlight, just in case, and my phone before I headed out. Halfway through my usual route, I was feeling happy and enjoyed my music, till I came across a little bridge that led to the forest. One of my songs faded out, but before the next one could play, I heard the most blood-curdling scream I've ever heard in my entire life. I took off my headphones, thinking that maybe a boar or another forest critter stepped into a trap, since it happens from time to time here, but once I took a step closer, half over the bridge, I heard it again, and this time, closer. I turned on my flashlight and saw among the trees next to the entry path a snow-white, skinny, pitch-black-eyed face looking straight at me. I've never felt this horrified in my entire life. My insides told me if I take another step, I'll be dead. I didn't care for what was to happen as I turned around and ran the other way straight home with a constant feeling of dread in my neck. Ever since I've been home alone, I've been feeling watched and uneasy. On several occasions, I even heard footsteps outside on our porch and garden chairs pushed around. I have no clue what I've seen or what to do about it. If any of you has an explanation on what this thing could be or why it's still stalking me, please let me know. In August of 2016, my family and I went on vacation to Cozumel, Mexico. While I was there, I experienced something extremely strange. I never really thought much about it afterwards, but while camping with my boyfriend, I retold the story to him and expressed my want to know what it is. Anyways, he told me I should totally post it here and see if anyone here knew what happened. So here I am and here's my super weird experience. So as I was saying, for three nights straight I experienced some sort of creature. I'd wake up at about 3ish a.m. each night to a new experience. On the first night, I awoke a little past 3 in the morning with an overwhelming sense of dread in the pit of my stomach. Somehow I just knew I needed to turn my head to the corner shelf above the bed, and in the place of a baby doll that had been sitting there since I arrived was this figure curled up in a fetal position. Its skin was pale and blotchy. It looked dried out, but the thing was covered in a thin layer of some kind of slime. Anyways, it was just sitting there, writhing, making absolutely no sound, and the only thing I could think of was that I needed to haul it out of there and get to my mom's room, so I did. After about an hour or so of sitting in the foot of my mom's bed, I finally worked up the nerve to go back into the room I was staying in. The creature was gone and the baby doll sat on the shelf in the same position it had been in since I got there. The next night I woke up around the same time with that god awful feeling in my stomach but this time it was on the floor. It was still in the fetal position but it was much bigger and shaking more violently than the previous night. Once again it didn't make any sound that I can recall. I ran out of my room to find my younger cousin sitting in the hallway crying just standing there. He was mumbling to himself and it became clear to me that he was sleepwalking. I wanted to wake him up and take him back to bed, but I was just stuck in place because in the back of my mind, I knew I shouldn't touch him for some reason. So I got his mom, and she took him to bed, and everything was fine after that. On the last night it happened, I woke up again with the same bad feeling only when I looked at the creature. It was massive. Floor to ceiling, hunched over like it was too tall to fit, and it just stood there watching me right by the door. I ran right past it into my mom's room as fast as I possibly could. The next morning when we were eating breakfast, my mom pointed out a burn or something on my thigh that hadn't been there when I went to bed that night. I hadn't been around anything that could have burned me, and I would have noticed if something had because it was particularly nasty. It didn't hurt or anything, it was just really gross. It healed fine and only left a faint scar, but... 
I still have no idea what it was or how it happened. After that, I have never saw that thing again, and never had any weird experiences like that. I was wondering if any of you might have answers for me because I have no idea what that thing was, or if it was just some weird, trippy dreams. The house I lived in until I was seven feels like home for me, but some weird stuff happened there. I don't trust the things that I saw in particular because I was so young and there's always the possibility of my opinion having been influenced by a book I read or something, so I'll leave my particular part out of it. I'll just explain the testimonies of my adult family members for starters. My mother would frequently see a little girl with long hair who was paler, both skin and hair, and wore a white, light pink sleeping gown with ruffles at the bottom. It would run from my room, laugh, and hide behind the TV. A few years later, my mother is estimating, about three years later, my grandmother bought me the exact gown and by then my hair was the same length as the girl that my mother saw. One day I ran from my room in the gown and hid behind the TV, laughing, replicating the incident that my mother saw years before. The girl that she saw looked like an older version of me, my copy. My mother and family had not told me anything about this until she thought I was mature enough to know. My father also had an experience like this. My father kept urging my mother to take a shower before leaving the house for an event and my mother told him that she had to help me get my clothes on so she couldn't get in the shower yet. I was a toddler. She finally did get in the shower but in the middle of the shower, she heard my father open the door and ask if she was in the shower. She said yes, of course, and when she got out, he explained that he had seen her dart across the living room and he was annoyed because he thought she still hadn't gotten in the shower. After that, he went towards the bathroom and heard the shower running, which caused his panic since he had just seen my mother walking in the opposite direction and then went to the shower to find that my mother was already there. He described the version of my mother who darted across the living room as having a long gown on as well as being pale. My mother once evacuated me to the backyard because she thought she heard voices on the other side of the house. They were so loud, she thought that she had left the radio on at first. She went back in to check the house afterwards and there was no one there. She went back inside and listened to the voices more to realize that one of the voices was hers and the other belonged to my father. They were talking about the state of the house, like when the real estate agent was showing them the house, and saying things like, yeah, we could put the dresser over here, and I like this house, it actually has a room in the spare bedroom. That kind of stuff. It was a conversation that they had had in the past. A year later, my aunt confirmed the event because she had heard the exact type of conversation between my parents in the basement. She said that the conversation went exactly the same. They were talking about how they liked the house, as if they were considering buying it. We had already lived in the house for years. A little bit later after that, my uncle, the aforementioned aunt's husband, admitted that he saw the same thing that my mother saw at the beginning, me running across the living room in the gown. So there we have it. Ultimately, I am asking for explanations of what you guys feel was going on. I'm open to literally anything you've got because it's crazy enough it happened anyway. It's kind of hard to reason through for me because they were like ghosts, but of living people. It was like different moments of time, which all took place in that house, were being played over in the house in front of my family members over months. There was one other occurrence that happened there, but I feel that it isn't really relevant to the rest of the events I described. However, that is for you to reason through or decide. There were a lot of windows in my mother's room, and my mother saw faces that were terrified arranged by the dust in the windows. They weren't like actual faces, but it was arrangements of dust in the window that looked like faces in terror. She said it could draw you in because of how realistic it was. She said it was extremely artistic and not like something that someone without artistic drawing or talents could arrange. She said that one face would look like it was part of another face. My father looked at the same windows and just saw dusty windows. He kept telling her to clean the windows because they bothered her so much, but she was also too mortified by them. 
My aunt's husband, the same guy from earlier, finally decided a little bit later that he wouldn't come to our house anymore because he saw faces in the windows. My mother hadn't told my aunt or her husband about the windows at all, so it made my mother feel better that it wasn't just her that saw it. Interestingly, both my mother and uncle saw the copy of me in the gown and the faces in the window, yet no one else like my father or aunt saw it, yet they experienced other paranormal things in the house as mentioned earlier. I know that the last occurrence was somewhat out of place with everything that happened so you can address what you think about the other events instead. However, if this last occurrence makes sense to you, then by all means, let me know. My father died in 2008 when I had just completed my high schooling and we were in enormous debt. I still live in poverty, but that story can be told another day in another sub. So to continue my studies, I needed to find work and for three years, I sold pakotas on the street and taught little children maths. In 2012, I was recruited into an ISP in our small town to work in the night shift. During the interview, I was particularly asked if I felt scared to stay alone at night in the third story of the enormous building with one security guard in the ground floor. I was never comfortable, but I needed the job. Plus, being it was night shift, I could attend my college during the day. I worked in that office between February 2012 to August 2013, and during that time, I never got curious to ask anyone why no one wanted to work nights. I heard before me someone used to work at night, but he left abruptly. My work was to pick calls from clients who would have problems with their internet connection and provide simple solutions. Anything complex, and I had to note down the names and address and pass the list to my senior via email and technicians would take care of them during the next day. It was a simple job, and I would not receive many calls, and so by 11, I would spread a thick blanket on the floor and fall asleep with the receivers beside my head in case someone phoned. June 2013 was the month I was supposed to find out why no one was ready to work at night. That night, the security guard with whom I had developed a very close friendship came to the third floor and asked if he could sleep in my room as there were too many mosquitoes on the ground floor. Understandably, he was supposed to stay awake, but he used to take advantage of my attitude and sleep every night and the whole building had no security camera. Anyway, we were both sleeping in the same room. The two receivers were on either sides of my head and the lights were turned off. I had locked the door loosely, keeping the lights of the corridor on. At about 3 a.m., I woke up to a sound as if someone was walking with his feet dragging on the floor. It was an inconvenient sound and very loud. I was facing the door and could see the light on the other side of the door through the thin gap between the floor and the door. I stayed down, staring directly at that gap, trying to understand what or who it was. As I waited, the sound got louder and louder and Soon I saw feet of someone crossing the door. My heartbeat got faster, but I thought that it must have been the security guard, but when I looked behind me, he was fast asleep. My blood froze at this, and the sound started to get louder again, and soon the feet appeared near my door. This time, instead of just crossing my door, it stopped there and didn't move. I waited for whoever it was to move away, but he would not. Then I did the stupidest thing. I thought it could be an intruder and instead of waking up the security guard quickly, I tiptoed to the door while the thing still stood there and pulled it open suddenly. There was no one, but a gust of wind hit my face, causing me to get goosebumps all over. I woke up the guard now and explained to him everything. He took out his torch, turned all the lights on, and searched the whole building but could find no one. Finally he came to me and said that it could be a demon. I couldn't sleep again. I dropped messages to those who worked during the day explaining everything. I reached the office the next day a little early to catch the others. This is when the story started to emerge. One explained that he did the night shift a few days and could always hear someone climbing up and down the stairs in the middle of the night. Another said that he saw a chair being moved around from one corner of the terrace to another by something that wasn't visible. That was why no one would like to work at night and I stayed there for more than a year. 
I left the company in August after they gave me an increment of $3 after working for more than a year. They used to pay me $54 per month. Yes, the salary is a scarier story than the demon, but I needed to grasp anything I could find to complete my bachelor's degree. I used to attend college in the morning, teach from afternoon to twilight, and then go to office. The cost of education and staying alive plunged me into further debt from which I am yet to recover completely. But God has been faithful all the time. They have installed cameras in the office these days and I sometimes wonder if they've been able to capture anything. About eight years ago, me and five other friends used to play the Ouija board in the local graveyard on a pretty regular basis. The last night we played, for reasons I'm about to explain, things went bad. This was the first night we used blood, our own blood. Four out of five of us cut our fingers and wiped blood on the board. We also used red candles. That night we encountered a demon. Eight years later and we are now almost dead. In our twenties, our luck is the worst. Lights flicker around us. We all feel a dark presence shadowing us. I believe it's slowly killing us. Here's what happened that night. The spirit that we contacted that night was very different from the others. It spoke to us clearly. After saying hello and chatting for a bit, it told me by name to go and stand in a triangle of trees. As I walked over there, it starts counting down on the board. Apparently, as soon as it hit zero on the board, I yelled, I'm here, which freaked everyone out. They continue to talk. It tells another one of us to go somewhere, but my friend decides to tell it no. Around that time, he looks up, off into the distance, and goes pale. He starts cussing and exclaims that there's a demon in the woods. We all see a shadowy figure where he is pointing. We all run. First mistake. We never said goodbye. As we are running, one friend is carrying the board. Noticing that the candles aren't falling off or going out, he throws the board. Candles never fell off or went out. We all jump the fence and one of my friends collapses. He's yelling in pain and lifts up his shirt. His stomach is purple, like his insides burst and his stomach was filled with blood. We pick him up and carry him. As we pass under street lamps that flicker and stop when we pass them, after about a mile, the lights stop flickering and my friend starts getting better. He lifts up his shirt and the purple is gone. It looks normal again and we walk home. When we get to his house, we are chilling and smoking cigarettes on his front porch talking about what happened. All of a sudden, the friend that was attacked, his phone rings. It was his own number. As he answered the phone, the lights at my house across the street started flickering really, really fast. There was only static on the other line. When he hung up the phone, my lights across the street stopped flickering. We didn't talk about it much after that. We also never played the Ouija board again. Now, eight years later, things are getting bad. I contacted all of them to see if they are having similar experiences. We are all almost dead. We've all had the worst luck. We've all had paranormal activity increasing the past week. Its presence is very strong. I believe it has been slowly killing us. We need help. How do we get rid of it? Asking for advice. Preferably experienced people. I swear on my life this is true. I live in a pretty small town, not like everyone knows everyone small, but small. When I was in high school, I was in JROTC and in the winter, we would lay wreaths on veterans' headstones. One time we went out and it wasn't snowing, but it was very cold and muddy, and the cemetery split down the middle by a 35 miles per hour road, so half of us went on one side, half on the other. I was in a leadership position, so I was in charge of the group I took across the road. I divided people into groups of two by people they didn't like, so they get the job done ASAP and do it right so the other persons didn't have anything to report them for. The two worst kids in the program came with me so I could keep them out of trouble and in line. So we work our way back and lay the wreaths. Everyone meets up and heads back toward the road. 
Mind you, this is a very large cemetery lined by woods on three sides and the road on the fourth. On our way toward the road, I remember this next part, but not quite. I remember it like walking through thick fog despite remembering everything else very clearly. I stopped dead in my tracks, still looking forward, looked to my left, turned that way, and went and sat in front of a headstone shaped as a small bed. I sat crisscross on the ground in the mud, ruining my uniform, pants, and bottom of my coat. I then said, What happened to you? and placed my hand on the foot of the bed and began sobbing. I cried for a short time, got up, and walked back to the group who was just staring at me not knowing what to do. I have no relation to this person, but I remember feeling a very intense and overwhelming sense of sadness and brokenness when I touched the bed. And just the other day, a friend of mine told me a very similar situation that happened with her in the same cemetery with the same headstone. The Let's Read podcast is brought to you by Robinhood. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos, all commission-free. They strive to make financial services work for everyone, not just the wealthy. It's a non-intimidating way for stock market newcomers to invest for the first time with true confidence. Simple, intuitive, clear design with data presented in easy-to-digest ways. From my experience with Robinhood, I've noticed other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, but Robinhood doesn't charge commission fees, trade stocks, and you keep all of your profits. The Robinhood web platform also lets you view stock collections, the 100 most popular, sectors like entertainment and social media, and curated categories like female CEOs, and analyst ratings of buy, hold, sell for every stock. Learn how to invest as you build your portfolio. Discover new stocks and track your favorite companies with a personalized news feed. You'll get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. Sign up at letsread.robinhood.com. That's letsread, L-E-T-S-R-E-A-D dot robinhood.com. 